Beretta 21A Bobcat Complete Disassembly Reassembly Part 2. Here are all the parts. We got the main frame, the hammer, the trigger, and a couple of springs and some pins in the barrel have not been removed. Obviously the grips, the magazines, the slide, the safety, its little detent and springs, the hammer spring, the sear and its spring, magazine release, the uh, sear pin and the trigger bar or draw bar spring, the trigger bar or draw bar, the takedown lever or barrel tilt lever, whatever you might want to call it, the um, slide springs and the slide spring levers, the trigger guard, those are the parts. Okay, so uh, let's clean this up a little bit here, get to it, and see if we can get this thing back together. Very small detent parts for the safety. Be careful not to lose those. Okay, where to start? I believe we're going to start by trying to get the uh, hammer spring back in place. It goes in this way. It's a little bit tricky to get in there. This little... Uh, piece on the end here has to fit up inside the hammer and it has potential to uh, get out of place while you're trying to compress the spring. Now I'm oiling uh, various parts of this as it goes together. I'm not going to get into oil and grease and all of that good stuff but a little dab of oil is going to go on this thing because it uh, it's a pivot point inside the hammer. Alright, so we're going to try and get that in place here. I find if you get that piece up inside the hammer with the hammer back, And then let the hammer come forward and you have to be careful because there, right there, you can see where that piece comes out the back and you got to hold that in place while you're compressing the spring. Get it back in place here. Alright, now the spring just won't quite make it in. Uh, this little plate is going to uh, pop into location there. So I'm going to get down in there with a screwdriver and tilt that little plate a little bit to get it started so that I can push it back. There, it's almost in. Now also I had to be careful to keep that uh, uh, actuator up in the hammer where it belongs there. And now I'm just going to uh, finesse this piece a little bit here to get it to pop into place. There, it popped, you can tell, because it's flush. It sits flush in both sides. It's in place now and we have hammer tension. Alright, so the next piece that I think I'm going to put in here is um, the uh, sear and the sear spring. And to do that, we're going to have the uh, draw bar spring and the pin that holds it. <clears throat> now, if you wanted a double action only gun, leave the sear and the sear spring out. That's all you got to do. It's as simple as that to get a double action only gun. 
Um, there might be potential for light strikes. If you do that, I'll show you that later. As long as you're using good ammo, it's not going to be a problem. So, again, a little bit of oil on the pin. Not much, just give it some lubrication. The spring, the spring goes like this. The rounded part is going to be up against the trigger bar. And then the sear goes like this with the hook back toward the hammer. This is the part of the sear that would get polished or worked on to change your trigger characteristics. You want to be careful with that um, where it engages into the hammer. We can't really see that. It's in the frame. Um, if you do the wrong stuff there, you can really mess your gun up. Sear goes right in there, pin drops in, goes through the sear, and we got a sear in place without a spring yet, but it's in place. All right, now we're going to put the sear spring in from the other side here. And to do that, I'm just going to pull it down in with the screwdriver. Alright, and at this point we are going to leave uh, that spring up a little bit. We're going to bring the sear back around and now we're going to pull this uh, tail up and over. Now it's in the sear. The sear should lock the hammer back and uh, we got no trigger connected yet but if I pull that sear forward it'll let the hammer go forward alright next we're gonna put the uh, draw bar in or the trigger bar now I could do these springs first but while I'm manipulating the gun to put all this other stuff in I don't want to risk popping that off and launching a part under spring pressure so I'm going to put this in first, which is going to make this piece a little more difficult, but it's not really that big of a deal. So again, this is the actuator. This is what actually runs the gun here. This either pulls the sear forward to let the hammer drop, or it pulls the hammer for double action purposes. And uh, the, this pin is what the uh, uh, trigger actually actuates, and there's a spring in there. Again, I'm going to put a little bit of oil in appropriate places here. Alright, so to get this in there, I'm going to reach in here and I'm going to get this little spring and uh, push it forward because it needs to go to the front of that bar that's going to go in. So then this pin goes through the holes in the top of the trigger and then that spring sits behind it right there. Alright, now we got to get this, uh, going to pull that back out just slightly so that I can engage the uh, sear properly. And then we're going to get this spring in proper position here with the curved part, the, the straight part fits in a little slot and then the curved part goes under that draw bar into a little groove. Alright, that's in place. Alright, next we're going to put the um, takedown lever in or tilting lever or whatever this little thing is called and again um, you can see there's some wear spots on there so we're going to put some lube in appropriate places here and there is a spring in there and that spring has to go forward 
and my little tool doesn't get me quite far enough forward another little thing that's going to help here is to pull the uh, hammer back and let it lock because it's going to get this trigger stuff a little bit farther forward to give us more room to compress that spring And as I thought, my hook doesn't work, but we can get it with a screwdriver. Push it forward, and in that part goes. And then the little spring rides against it right there. Kind of keeps it all in place. There's a little channel that it sits in so it can't move. And uh, you can see that it functions. At this point, the uh, barrel latches barrel releases but it's not under spring tension yet so let's put that spring in that is actually the trigger guard that makes that spring and it kind of goes up in there like that and then you just pull it back and set it in its notch there we go alright so this gun goes together pretty quickly uh, we're on to the point of the uh, main slide spring assemblies here, but I want to focus on something else a little bit first before we go into that. I have a couple different styles of magazines here. I got the Breda magazine and I've got a McGar magazine here. Um, the Breda is definitely superior to the McGar, and here's why. Here is the follower. It's got a little, uh, it's actually got a screw that holds it together. I'm not going to take this apart but um, this comes apart pretty standard. You got to take that screw out, uh, take the base plate off, get the follower. The Metgar is uh, put together a little bit differently. You've got uh, a little plug in here that sort of floats in the follower and you take the base plate off and that lets the spring come down and then that little uh, plug comes out this enlarged hole. Well the problem is that can move back and forth ever so slightly and as long as you've got an empty magazine or a full magazine it's not a problem so I'm going to introduce some ammo into this uh, video which I wouldn't normally do but we're in a safe condition here so I've got like roughly a half loaded magazine here and um, this little pin here when it's in the center of its travel it moves far enough that it won't let the magazine go in well, no worries there. We just fiddle with it until we get it in. Problem is, if you have an issue where you have to take the magazine out uh, partially loaded and that thing happens to want to get in the right spot or the wrong spot, that magazine won't come out of there. It catches right there in the frame and that won't let you get that magazine out. You've got to fiddle and fiddle and fiddle with it and eventually you can get it out of there. It's frustrating when it happens. It's happened to me and I didn't know why. I finally figured it out. With the Beretta magazine, that doesn't happen because that screw in that follower, there is no sideways slop. There is no chance for it to uh, catch. Um, so there you have it. The Beretta magazine, definitely superior. Let's get those live rounds far enough away from us now here even though we're don't plan on doing anything stupid. All right. So at this point, um, we can put. Uh, let's put this uh, magazine release stuff back together here because it's pretty benign, and we'll get it out of the way before we have to deal with things that can go boing. So again, that spring goes on. This little part here. I don't know if you can see this on the camera but there's a little bit of a hook right there and that's what actually catches the magazine that has to go toward the magazine into the frame and then we just get it started from the other side screw it together and there's a hole in it that a punch fits pretty nicely in here if you get the right punch and snug that thing up all right let's see if it works
Magazines in, magazines out. Okay, now we can do some uh, recoil, slide recoil spring action here. So this little channel thing that that spring fits into uh, with the keeper on the bottom is going to slide down in this groove in the frame here and then the spring goes in and uh, then you got these little plunger things with the notch in them on the end uh, you want to be careful because you could launch those I'm gonna carefully set that in that spring and then I'm gonna come with my arm down the top Get it lined up to go in the notch that it needs to sit in. And I'm carefully going to get that arm over that stud. And click it in okay at this point you want to be careful that you're not banging on that because you could make it go boing I'm gonna put a little bit of lube on some of these uh, parts here before the grips go on here just to make sure everything's got a shot uh, the other sides are going to be a little bit easier because we don't have that uh, drawbar in the way we can hinge it into place all right Okay, maybe I should have done the safety first because now I got to worry about popping those parts off while I do the safety. Uh, but we'll uh, see what we can do now for the safety. And again, we got a very small detent and a very small spring. And the uh, spring has to go down in the hole here. And then the detent has a little uh, pin that fits in that spring. Got to get some oil on this stuff. Now, as I mentioned previously, the hammer has to be back to do this. If the hammer is forward, this pin won't go through. You can't really see it on camera, but the hammer, the bottom of the hammer is partially blocking that hole and it won't let this safety shaft go in. So you got to cock the hammer and at that point you can get that safety shaft in and then we have to work that detent we gotta push that detent down to get it behind that little pin that it pops on so you need to be really careful doing that look at there it already just popped out on me So I'm going to very carefully try and um, push that thing down with the appropriate tool. I don't know what that is for sure. i got a flattened out paper clip here. Let's see if we can get that down and behind where it goes without making it uh, into a projectile. If you get too much pressure on it trying to put it in, it, it, won't, uh, it won't compress. Alright, did you all catch that? Did you see that plunger go launching? 
Well, that's how not to do it, that's for sure. But, you know what? It just so happens, today is my birthday, and you gotta love good karma. I heard that thing and had an idea where it went, so I grabbed a broom, and I found it. It was about 10 feet away under the pinball machine. My shop floor is epoxy concrete with black and gray specks. Could have been looking a long time before I finally went and ordered another one. But happy birthday me. So, here's the plastic bag trick. Now I went and hunted for a plastic bag and I came up with this thing. I don't know what it is. It's, uh, I think it's uh, something that a bed comforter came in. But we're going to attempt this again inside the plastic bag. Now I'm not sure uh, if you're going to be able to really see what I'm doing, but you'll get the gist of it here. So I'm going to put the spring and the plunger back into the safety lever. We're going inside the bag and you probably won't be able to see what I'm doing, but I'm going to try and get it together with that uh, plunger to go where it belongs now. And um, in case it does launch, uh, I'm in this bag so I don't have to go searching for it across the room again. Uh, it's a little difficult to see what I'm doing in this bag here, but uh, we'll see about getting that thing in place where it goes. Be better off if I didn't have these camera lights on here. They're causing a funny reflection here. And again, you want to orient your work so that if it does uh, pop on you in the bag, it uh, stays in the bag and it doesn't come out the mouth of the bag that you're working through. And I got it in place. Okay, I actually did a trial run of this without the bag and it worked fine and then I took it apart to show you all and eh, there it went launched. But now I have it. It's in place. It pops, it detents like it should, and now I'm going to let the hammer go forward because that will keep that thing from working its way out. Now another thing that I did uh, here off camera is I went in with a little file and I actually put a little bevel inside here to uh, fix that um, magazine problem that I just described. So now I got some other parts that I got to put back in here again. We already did this. I don't know how long it, this is going to take. I might leave it in or I might edit it out of the video. I don't know. I don't know if there is a direction to these things. I don't think so. They look to be a stamped part. One side is kind of rounded and one is a little uh, uh, more sharp. They're, they're both the same so it's not like there's a left and a right. But you can see there's wear marks and I think those wear marks were against the frame. So I'm going to put them in the same way with that wear mark against the frame. And there it's in. Alright, so what do we got left here to do? We're just about there. And we can put the grips back on. When the grips go on, there's a little wedge part of the front of the grip here that has to uh, fit into the frame. We are screwing down plastic, so we probably don't want to go too tight. I did have a set of grips that broke. I don't know if they were just weak grips or if I had them too tight and the screw uh, caused a pressure point that allowed them to crack. Alright, now all we got to do is put the slide back on. So uh, 
I did some oiling on the inside off camera as well. I'm going to do a little bit of oiling on this slide here. A couple of spots that uh, pivot here where the slide runs. A little dab on the top of that bar. We're going to put some on the um, barrel in general. Just kind of wipe it around, let it get where it needs to be. A little bit of thinner oil down in the um, pivot point here. Wipe up any excess. We don't want it dripping. Then we can put the slide back on. And again, the slide just goes on and clicks down into place. Lock the barrel. And there we have it. All right. Now, I also mentioned that you could make this DA by leaving the sear out. Okay, so watch the uh, the hammer and how far back it comes on DA. I don't want to let it fall on an empty chamber. I'm going to try and stop it here. So as it comes back, well, it's really hard to see, but it it's about watch it compared to the beaver tail there versus when you have it on single action it's a lot farther back so I don't know if that has potential to cause light strikes or not now another thing if you were to uh, set it up for double action only if you leave the safety in it locks your slide so you've only got one shot and then you have to reload which is a little bit of a hassle but um, you only got one shot it's not going to operate and eject if you were to leave that safety out and convert it to double action only then you wouldn't have any problem then you'd have this long pull every time instead of that short single action pull but anyway there it is we'll put an empty Beretta magazine in it and that's the 21A Bobcat back together and appears to function. Thanks for watching.